Welcome back. The Justice Department confirmed this week that Attorney General Jeff Sessions is considering appointing a special counsel to investigate several matters related to Hillary Clinton. One of those issues is the sale of Uranium One to a Russian-backed company back in 2010. Hillary Clinton's State Department signed off on the deal despite the fact that it gave Russia control of uh, only 20 percent of U.S. uranium capacity. <laughs> Critics allege that Hillary okayed the deal because of some hefty donations to the Clinton Foundation. The National Review's Andy McCarthy wrote today, Uranium One has never primarily been a national security controversy. It's a corruption controversy. Joining us now from Tallahassee, a man who knows more about this perhaps than anyone else. Peter Schweizer is the president of the Government Accountability Institute and author of the huge bestseller, Clinton Cash. So, Peter, I've noticed this happening over the last mm, 48 hours, especially. A number of people, some Republicans, some Democrats, and always the Clintons, of course, there's no there there. This is just a fantasy cooked up in the mind of some guy who wrote a book called Clinton Cash, and it's grabbed onto by the conservative media, you know, pay no attention to the scandal behind the curtain. Yeah, that's, that's the standard line, Laura. The problem uh, for that narrative is there's plenty of evidence. Um, the Uranium One saga, most people are aware of this 2010 sale of Uranium One to the Russian government that was approved by the Obama administration. But the story really begins in 2005 when Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton help this Canadian investor, Frank Juicer, who's the founder of Uranium One, acquire these uranium assets in Kazakhstan. Uh, which is a, a massive producer of uranium. And, and what we have in very clear evidence is the video testimony of the Russian, sorry, the Kazakh minister of Kazatomprom, which is the uh, Kazakh Atomic Agency. What does he say in this video deposition? Mukhtar Zhakashev, his name, says that they granted that concession to Frank Justra because Hillary Clinton, then a senator, blackmailed and threatened Kazakh officials, saying she would not cooperate with them getting U.S. money, that she would not meet with any Kazakh officials until the concession was granted. Uh, after that concession was granted by Kazakh officials, Frank Schuster sent $30 million to the Clinton Foundation. So we already have the oral testimony uh, by this Kazakh official. It's never been disputed. And by the way, Laura, in that testimony, he describes in detail how this deal went down. He talks about a Clinton Foundation employee named Tim Phillips who pressured him. When Tim Phillips was contacted and asked about this video, he did not respond. He changed his online resume, removing the reference to his employment through the Clinton Foundation. That's just one piece yeah. of evidence. So this is not a fantasy cooked up. This is something why, foreign government officials have talked about. Why is Andy McCarthy saying this is just corruption? It has no national security implications. I mean, our viewers hear uranium and they think nuclear power and that's important. And nuclear other things. But, but Andy's like, it's not, it's not a national security question. Well, I, I, would, I would respectfully uh, disagree with Andy. I have enormous respect for him. Um, what's happening is a lot of people think Uranium One was totally about the uranium in the United States. The United States is not a big uranium producer. The problem is that's not true. Uranium One was a company when the Russians bought it and still is a company today that has massive uranium deposits around the world, in Kazakhstan, in Australia. They have them in Africa. They have them in the United States. If if you were to look simply at the uranium that they have in the United States, the 20 percent, you could say it's pretty small. It doesn't amount to a lot. The problem is that's a small sliver of the entire assets that, that um, Uranium One um, represents. And by the way, this is very important. Uranium One, when it was bought by the Russians in 2010, the money for that deal was publicly announced by Vladimir Putin himself. And that deal was authorized by Vladimir Putin himself. So certainly Vladimir Putin saw national security interests from Russia's standpoint in acquiring Uranium One. So we're always looking for the Putin connection 
to elected officials. <laughs> you ever look at a picture right. of Putin? Did you, did you ever have a white <laughs> Russian in a restaurant? I mean, <laughs> ever go to the Russian tea room? Peter, I saw you at the right. Russian tea room once in New York. That's a huge scandal. Uh, do you think, do you, are you committed to this idea? I don't know if you've thought it through about the special prosecutor. I think there's actually a good argument to be made that you really don't need a special prosecutor that I guess if, if we believed in the Justice Department that they would actually pursue possible crimes, intimidation of witnesses, bribery, all the things that we're hearing about when it comes to the Clintons and this stuff, you can get a great line prosecutor to do this with a great staff. But, you know, we got well, a lot of people, Jim Jordan, they want a they special prosecutor, and a, another special prosecutor to investigate this. Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. Here's the problem. We know for a fact the FBI has in its possession another tape, an audio tape, uh, that was basically um, recorded by this FBI informant that's going to be coming forward. I have not heard the tape, but I've heard about the tape from people at the FBI. And that audio tape apparently is Russian uh, officials with this uranium company talking about making donations to the Clinton Foundation to gain favorable action. That tape was given to Department of Justice prosecutors, the FBI field office requesting uh, the ability to wiretap and to survey the Clinton Foundation. Mm. The Obama Justice Department came back and said, no, nope, not enough evidence. So, you know, my point with an independent counsel, my point with an independent counsel, Laura, is, look, this is so political. Uh, I think the way to deal with this is precisely in this manner. It's important. It's complex. It goes to the to the reason people think there's so much corruption in Washington D.C. and the fact that there's a double standard. Some people are held Always. into account and others are not. Yeah, the law should apply to both parties. Individuals in both parties should be held to account. Uh, Peter, it's always great seeing you. Thank you so much.